TSN originates from the audio video broadcasting industry and was transitioned to TSN approximately 10 years ago, where the TSN task group were founded by a Triple E. TSN is not a single standard, but more a toolset consisting of many standards that are published as amendment to the IEEE 802.1Q standard, also what we know in the daily wording as VLAN. Some of those are published, by, but many are still in draft, so despite for the work on TSN was started a decade ago, this is still a work in progress. There are two parts of the standardization going on. One part is for the different TSN components, shown in the bottom part of the picture. The upper part shows the TSN profile for the different vertical markets, like automotive, industrial automation, wireless front hold, and others. The components are focused on four main areas. Time synchronization shown on the upper left corner, where TSN has its own PGP IEEE 1588 profile. The lower left corner focused on the features like traffic shaping to support guaranteed latencies and bandwidth. Some of those require time synchronization, but not all. So despite for its called time sensitive network, are there no requirement for time synchronization? It depends fully on which features that are needed to be supported. The upper right stand standards are focused on reliability, both in terms of security of re reliable time synchronization in the network, but also in terms of securing reliability for transmission and receiving the individual Ethernet package. The huge pile of standards in the lower right corner is focused on resource management, how to collect requirements and capabilities from the individual elements in the network, how to set up and configure the elements according to the, re the requirements, how to collect network statistics to real-time monitoring of the network and adjust performance to new and changing requirement. There can be many different requirements and reasons to use TSN. In general, it is the overall goal with TSN to provide deterministic guarantees for quality of service as well as reliability in a switched network based on Ethernet. By adding TSN to your infrastructure network, is it possible to have one converged network that can both cover OT and IT networks. It is, for example, possible to guarantee latencies from a critical sensor or certain bandwidth from a video source on a factory floor while having regular IT traffic running on the same network. So the need for separating these two networks is no longer required due to your critical real-time systems will not be impacted by the background traffic. Compatibility is also a big important for using TSN. TSN is not driven by a single big vendor, but have contribution from many vendors with the collaboration through IEEE. This ensures that equipment from different vendors can coexist in the same network due to the effort in standardization and block tests. The standardization work for profiles for different vertical markets also ensure that there are consistent feature support between equipment from different vendors for a given use case. The last item on my list is kind of contradicting the previous one. Despite all the work in regards to standardization of the different profiles in TSN, does it not prevent anyone from designing the network with exactly the desired TSN features they need for their use case? This makes, of course, most sense in closed environment where all network elements are in control. One would probably ask, why should anyone do that? And the quick answer would be that this will simplify the solution, minimize the footprint of a chip if unused features can be left out. The first feature I would like to talk about is 802.1 QAV Credit Base Shaper. One of the benefits with the Credit Base Shaper is that it spreads out frame transmission and reduces bursting of class based traffic. It also gives the possibility to prioritize bandwidth between different traffic classes. In the illustration, it shows the blue and orange line that transmission of a traffic class is only possible if the credit for a given class is positive when the transmission is ready to start. After the first blue and orange package is transmitted, where the arrow point on the picture is created from both class A and B negative, so no transmission from either of those traffic classes can start. They need to wait. This gives room for the best effort traffic to be transmitted. 
Time synchronization is not needed for the credit-based shaper. So if this can fulfill the TSN requirement for network, can the whole time synchronization of the network elements be avoided? The next uh, feature to mention is the uh, 802.1 QBV time-aware shaper. This is just as common as used as the credit-based shaper. As the name indicates, it does the shaper rely on timing. It works in the way that it divides the time into repetitive periods where gates for the different traffic classes can be opened or closed during this uh, the period to allow priority traffic to be transmitted at a certain time. This eliminates jitter and unwanted delay through the network by allocating time slots to the traffic class class of service. This gives a very predictable and deterministic behavior of the traffic. If we use the analogy to our daily drive, the traffic would a synchronized network with time array shapers be able to guarantee a green wave through a city in the rush hour for a prioritized emergency vehicle. The last feature in relation to latency and bandwidth I want to talk about is the 802.1 QBU frame preemption. The idea with frame preemption is that high prioritized uh, frame uh, classified as ex express packages can interrupt and put ongoing frame transmission on hold while the express package will be sent. After all, the, the uh, preemptible frame continues the transmission. Downside of this is that frame preemption adds overhead to the bandwidth due to insertion of a trailer for the first part of the preemptible frame as well as a, as a header for the second part. The main motivation for using frame preemption is to minimize latency for express packages in the network due to they do not need to wait for an ongoing transmission to finish before it can be transmitted. The line rate has an impact on the efficiency of frame preemption due to the time spent on the wire or fiber for a frame is significantly lower in a network running at example 25 gigabit instead of 10 megabit. So the efficiency are higher with lower speed and decline when the network speed grows. Reliability can be a strong requirement for TSN network. 802.1 CB frame replication and elimination gives to a large degree guarantee that the frame will arrive at the destination in the network. In TSN, do a network consists of three key elements. The talker that transmits traffic to a listener. The talker can, for example, be a sensor or actuator. The listener can, as an example, be some sort of controller that needs inter information from the talker. In between the talker and the listener, the network have various TSN bridges. A bridge can be compared with a switch in a traditional Ethernet network. In the example on the left are frame replication and illumination implemented in the bridge. So when the frame arrives at the first bridge from the talker, will it be replicated and traversed in two different routes in the network? Again, will the replication be eliminated on the last bridge before only one copy of the frame will be transmitted to the listener? In the example on the right, are frames replicated in the talker and eliminated in the listener? This removed the single point of failure that both the first and the last bridge are in the left illustration. Besides for the reliability, do frame replication also provide lower latency? Due to latency, will always be equal the fastest of the two routes in the network. 